The blog has finally dropped. They give us detailed information about cross car customization, new ranked and social modes, and a big quality of life improvements coming into challenge system and the official release date of the August drop pod. So let's get right into those details. So this was just dropped on us guys, hot off the press, some news for you guys. So if you like these kind of news update videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let's me know you want to see some more content like this. It helps you keep up to date with everything going on with Halo. But let's get right into this. So we start off with the official release date on Tuesday, August 9th is when all these improvements to Halo Infinite will be coming around. A really nice thing that actually is a change of pace from 343 is that they say that all visors will work on all cores, which now is pretty freaking awesome. Previously, they were just saying that they wanted to kind of stick to the Canon cores, have a lot more customization available for cross core customization, and then have the fracture cores kind of off their own thing, but it sounds like visors now are gonna be available for all cores. An example they show here is the Night Wisp uh, visor here that's on the Eagle Strike core. It can be put onto, well, the Mark V right here. Another example is the Rock Shasha Athena's mirror visor on the Yoroi set, which pretty freaking cool. So you're probably thinking, yeah, dude, just visors, whoopty freaking new, but visors can really help solidify the visual presentation of your Spartan, so it actually will be quite nice. As well, there's some additional cross-core customization that we didn't know about until the release of this blog, saying right here that this drop pod will also allow certain Mark VII helmet attachments to be worn across multiple Mark VII helmets. But there's a little bit of an asterisk to it here, saying that most helmet attachments for the Mark VII core are designed to fit a specific helmet, but some happen to fit on the Mark set, another Mark 7 helmets. So this is gonna be a really great addition as well. And they also do state to clarify that there will be no need to unlock your visor or attachments or different kind of attachments on your Mark 7 with other helmets as well. So if you have it unlocked, you unlock it once. That's all you need to do. They also say a full list of all the different attachments will be available at the release of the patch notes. So for example, here is the soldier helmet attachment on the Rampart helmet, as well as a Mark V B visor on your Mark VII core, which again, cross core, sweet. Here's a War Master helmet attachment on the Firefall helmet with a Rakshasa visor thrown on top of it. Next, we're gonna go into some new modes that will be coming in on August 9th, guys. The new modes being Team Doubles, which I am definitely excited for. Team Doubles has definitely been a fun mode to play in Halo traditionally. It's saying that Ranked Team Doubles, which will is set to land two weeks after the drop pods release, along with a CSR reset, which hits me kind of hard on that one right there. It's saying additionally, a social Team Slayer playlist will be accompanying the ranked doubles on its launch day. So two weeks after this August 9th update, we'll have ranked doubles and social doubles. People have been begging for more ranked modes within Halo Infinite, so this is your first step forward, guys. It's really awesome, but it does hit me hard. I've been trying to get back up to Onyx. I got back almost cl so close to back up to Diamond 5 where I was. And now we get a CSR reset, which does hurt quite a bit. I did not expect this to happen. We saw this happen with season one as well, and it actually brought a lot of people back into Halo to kind of regrind the ranks. So this is sucks for me, but I think overall beneficial for the health of Halo. 343 does state that they're monitoring the health of these playlists. So guys, if you want team doubles to stay in Halo, play team doubles. And they'll be doing some additional experimentation and additions to these playlists as we move forward with the rest of season two. Next item is quite interesting that they mention here that they're kind of showing the groundwork of is region selection being available. Uh, now a lot of people outside the US really do struggle to find matches or getting thrown into loggy ga laggy games. And they stay right here saying this drop pod does contain a lot of groundwork required to turn region selection on in the future. This would allow players to select like between all searching across all regions faster for faster search times or more local regions for better ping. Though they do state that this feature does still have some time to come to this game, but uh, players may spot some back end work. Been done to start putting things in place. We'll have more to share on region selection as we get closer to that launch. So all my gamer friends out in Australia, in the ANZ region, as well as the jolly old London towns and also in just in Europe in general, you guys have, might have a little bit more control over your pings and search experiences. So I know right now people in the Australian region, they 
basically can't find games a lot of times in matchmaking. So with this region selection, it could help focus players into much more of their regions. And so then one, you find less laggy matches. And two, if you're in a lower population area, help you able to find games better. Now, when they said that these drop pods are gonna be quality life improvements, they really did mean it. And that is that challenges will now be viewable in match guys right here when you start up the screen you press start to kind of see what's going on you can see what challenges you need to complete oftentimes i forget what challenges i need to do and i actually wrote like a sticky note on my second monitor to know what's going on now this is going to be in game they do state though that they won't be able to have live tracking at first when it comes to this challenge tracker right here but it is in the works and they will add it in eventually but i think right now i think for the most part we just need to know like oh wait what challenges do i need to do again and just work towards that though i'm surprised we're not seeing any issues being covered about the packet loss and ping issues we've been having in halo infinite recently 343 did state that they are actively working on a fix for this. If you want to know more about it, I highly suggest checking out this video right here. It goes into all the details you need to know about what 343 is doing to fix ping and packet loss within their servers. Thank you for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.